Hi everyone, I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you about uh, Sadgrove Lab at the Tokyo University of Science Physics Department. We use nanofibers and we focus on using these nanofibers to move things around, very small things, particles of a nano size. Now, why do we need to use a fiber? to accomplish such things? Why can't we just move nano objects with our fingers? Well, when something is so small that you can't even see it, it's also very hard to move it with control from one position to another. So it makes a lot of sense to try to control the nano world with other nano-sized objects. In this case, we use an optical nanofiber. So what is an optical nanofiber? Well, you probably have heard about optical fibers. A typical optical fiber has a size, if you remove its protective jacket, of approximately 125 microns in diameter. That's already certainly quite small. However, the kind of optical fibers that we are using are much much smaller in diameter. How small? Well, they're about 200 times smaller than the hair on your head in terms of their diameter. And it's very hard to see them with the naked eye. So these kind of fibers, which you can see a sample of here taken by a scanning electron microscope, have special properties. One of their most important properties is the so-called evanescent field. The light inside a nanofiber is not confined just within the fiber. Instead, it also exists outside the fiber with a strong intensity. Now this means, for example, that we can use that light to sense or interact with things outside the fiber which come close to it. The other very useful thing about a nanofiber is that it's good at capturing light from things placed on its surface. To give one very important example, we sometimes put quantum dots onto the fiber. A quantum dot is a very special light source. It creates photons, particles of light, one at a time. And it's been found that by putting the quantum dot onto the nanofiber, many of those particles of light go directly into the fiber. Now, because an optical nanofiber is connected to a normal fiber, we can directly connect these single photons, for example, to a communication network. So we think there are a lot of very promising avenues for application for these fibers. The example I just gave you was about controlling the movement of particles of light within the fiber. However, as I just told you, we are actually interested in using the fibers to control small particles as well, even atoms in fact. How does this work? Well, in 2018, a very famous physics experiment won the Nobel Prize, and that experiment was the use of light to trap small particles. It turns out that if you focus light very strongly, then exactly at the focus of the light, you can trap small particles. This effect is known as optical tweezers. And as I said, it's very famous and won the 2018 Nobel Prize in Physics. We do something similar with our fibers. You see, because the light exists also outside the fiber, and because that light is concentrated down at a scale of approximately 500 nanometers, the light is very strong, and we can use it to trap small particles close to the fiber. You can see an example shown here where we move a 150 nanometer gold nanosphere along the fiber surface using light.
Finally, let me summarize our three main research themes. As I told you, we can trap particles of light inside the fiber and send them where we want them to go. We can also use a newly discovered technique where we control the polarization of light in order to choose the direction in which it travels inside the fiber. We've carefully checked the nature of this control and we've shown that it operates like a mirror. When two things are mirror images, we usually call them chiral. It turns out that the chiral property is also a property of fibers and we can access it by using the polarization of light. If you look at our experimental results, you'll notice that one sphere is the mirror image of the other in these results. I also told you a little bit about how we are moving particles along a fiber using light. We are also hoping to apply this technique to nanoparticles from the bio world. For example, we've recently completed experiments using liposomes, which are particles found in everyone's body, which are very much similar to cells. Uh, finally, I didn't have a chance to explain to you today, but we're also hoping to do experiments with cold atoms. This allows us to reach into the quantum regime, which is a new regime of transport physics. That is, the way that atoms move due to their quantum nature can be quite different from, for example, the way that a nanoparticle moves along a fiber. So we want to access these new opportunities for control of transport using the quantum properties of atoms. So that's a summary of the research being performed here at Sadgrove Lab and we hope to find many new and interesting opportunities to study both fundamental physics and to apply the things that we learn using nanofibers in the lab, hopefully for example to next generation networks, new ways to manipulate cells and perhaps even in fundamental physics using cold atoms. Thanks for listening.